Greetings everyone, and welcome to Anime Night in the Dojo. Today's featured show, Made in Abyss, Season 2. Indeed, Made in Abyss, Season 2, Episode 11. I'm Ryu. He's Age, we're back for another episode. I went outside, that's why I look like this. My hair tie broke and I just gave up. So, uh, I, I guess I'm channeling my inner Markiplier today, I don't know. I'll figure it out later. It doesn't look that bad, right? Yeah, it probably looks terrible. Who cares? Uh, anyway, um, I believe we're still mid-fight with Reg and Fafta, and we have nothing else to discuss because we've talked out literally everything. They've announced season three, but the author, like, is not that far ahead. So uh, unless that's going to be anime original, they're going to have to wait a minute. <laughs> I mean, season three is probably going to be a ways off. Like, they announced season two, like, right after season one ended, and that was still, like, three or four years before they got around to it. Fair enough. Largely because they were in the similar boat where they more or less caught up with a lot of the... Uh... Uh... Trigon original content. Right. So, yeah, we just got to kind of see what happens. Uh... I got nothing else. You know, we've talked about pretty much everything. Um, we just gotta kind of wait and see what happens in these last two episodes. So I really don't have anything. Got anything, Age? Um, not really. All right then. So let's continue the fight. See how it wraps up. The Wajukon still being sus as hell, and uh, yeah, see what happens with the village. So here goes something. One thing, uh, briefly showing Ozen for a second there in the opening reminded me of. What happened? We actually still haven't seen, like, anything of the surface this season. Or any of all that yep. shenanigans going on there. With, like, the sicknesses or anything like that that were part of season one. Seriously? Even the prince was no match? That's bad. That was a solid RKO out of nowhere. Got to give him props. memory transference. I'm glad you're here with me. At the end of your destiny, there will come a time when you yourself decide your value. The conditions are already in place. Imagine the worst case scenario. Rico gets it's injured again, in and humans. And she's on the Boy children can use them, but Wazukyan the could use it. For some reason, perhaps to win back Reg's heart, gives Rico a piece of herself. Just gonna uh, pinball our way out of here, I guess. What is happening? You're practically mother and child, aren't you? Uh, not just practically. What is the meaning of this? Beyond this duty, what lies hidden in wait? Can there really be value? Well, you is the name of this season. Yeah. You do not decide for me. Fafta will learn a value for herself so soon. Oh, great. Now she has the Sharingan. <laughs> she also, uh her altered appearance is taking on a lot of traits of Weko. Yeah. Who, based on Bailoff's memory transference, she's already starting to see as a, basically a second parent. Alrighty then. So, Bailoff uh, pulled a memory is the key. I like it. 
I can believe it. Seems pretty uh, on point for his character. I mean, after having that knowledge that he uh, gave to her is uh, kind of a big deal contextually for her. So uh, it kind of changes her uh, whole way of thinking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she didn't really know anything about the story or anything like that. All she knew is that the village was her mother and that she was born by the village to embody all of her mother's uh, resentment and hate for what was done to her. Right. So as it stands, the only uh, remaining thing to uh, clean up is Wazukan. After he pinballed out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how about that for an exit? I mean, seriously. He, he is still quite the mystery. Uh, Beloff was always a little bit more straightforward the way they portrayed him and uh, the way they handled that for him was pretty interesting. Um, don't really have any issue with that. Uh, Nana Chi, Nana chi pretty hard. This episode. It's been a while since we've seen that. And by that I mean, you know, critical thinking and just doing Nana Chi things. <laughs> Yeah, for him. Overall, there wasn't a whole lot to really say mid-episode for this one, but there's still a reasonable amount to talk about, including, yeah, you know, like one of the few things that I did say <laughs> mid-episode is that Nanachi got to have a brief stint as a stand user. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that was, uh, <laughs> that whole backdrop just screamed, you know, stand user. <laughs> I mean, look at that. Look at it. If you told me that this was uh, in a part of JoJo somewhere, I'd believe it. <laughs> I mean, come on. More, more <laughs> if it was this scene, but with Nanachi still having the helmet up. Yeah. Like the, the mask on. Yeah. <laughs> Nanachi still had the mask down, man. It just did the just, you know, the, the, there goes the, uh, you know, the menacing uh, kanji going off over there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I totally believe it. You know, this is your cover for P6 right there. <laughs> oh, man. How about that for a crossover event? Beloff is just a, a, another uh, a skin for a... There, there, there's a persona out there that looks like him. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, that was, that was definitely a thing. Um... I'm surprised we didn't get more Nanachi in this one, but this was definitely more, you know, th this was all about Fafta's uh, transformation, if you will. I mean, we saw <laughs> the whole, you know, her taking on aspects of, of Waco, you know, and stuff like that with her hair changing and then her acquiring the Sharingan. So she is now the most powerful person in this universe. <laughs> Because the last thing we freaking need is another character with a visual prowess power. <laughs> I really hope that's not what it is. <laughs> just just going to throw it out there, okay? But man, that that was flat out just like the Mangekyo Sharingan animation. <laughs> well, the actual animation it was is it's actually the freaking... Um, interference units right it's the same animation that like pops up with them and on like reg's helmet and stuff like that yeah i was just poking fun at it but still it's like come on <laughs> don't, don't don't even allude to it we have enough of that crap going around <laughs> but yeah um i assume that's because she was able to have three things, right? She has three wishes, yeah. Yeah, so one would assume that based on what happened to Gabu there, uh, that's why. You know? So. Yeah, like she... The wish... She, she has three wishing stones embedded in her body. And the presumably the one wish... She's only got one wish used up, presumably. Might not even have any until this point. Um... 
was just like the wish that she was born with and like the thing that actually made it to where she was the only child that survived was the wish to see the village destroyed right but that once again that also might not qualify as one of her wishes because it wasn't something that she consciously made it was just something that was part of her creation right so still some questions as to how that actually functions for her uh I assume <laughs> what you can knows is that's just who he is. You know what I mean? What he's trying to accomplish by abducting Waco? Hmm. Um, presumably it's as leverage against Fopta because of his whole like thing of like, oh well she knows the she knows the story now. Which means she's significantly less likely to kill you, Waco. <laughs> but it makes things way worse for me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we all know what he did. There was soup involved. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, that's about what they. I, I think they really need to wrap up because I don't know if they can really shoehorn that into a season three at the beginning. But I mean, yeah, no, like I, I assume <laughs> as it stands. She is just going to go full Pampage mode and take care of all these primeval creatures. No problem now. Yeah, probably. Um, I don't remember if this is 12 or 13 episodes. 12. 12. So we, so we got one more. So yeah, then yeah, the next episode is probably going to be her pretty quickly wrapping up this whole fight. And then um, mostly centered around Dealing with Wazukyan, because they will probably hold Vueko hostage, since he... I'm pretty sure Nanachi was more or less on point with uh, their, like, estimation of what his endgame probably is. It's probably... He's probably deliberately, like, trying to get Fopta killed to get a hold of the stones again. The Wishing Stones, and to then try to manipulate Rico into using them somehow. Right. Basically, just what Nanachi was going on about with creating a different kind of village. I don't necessarily know if it's going to be, if it would be exactly be recreating the village, just like basically making a moving village or one that they could leave, but something. Trying to create, to use Rico to create something that allows them to actually leave. Because that, like, Rico immediately called it out on it was the whole thing of like. You don't actually want to be here. This was just your, like, immediate we need to fix the situation uh, resolution. Yep. This, isn't what, this was not your end goal. Yeah. So, th this was a lot to take in. It was impressive. Uh, as always, the backdrops, the just... Look, look at this. Look at this. It's fantastic. Are you kidding me? It's great. I, I love everything about it. Uh, the fact that we got another one of those primeval giraffe things... Terrifying, but now Waco, or not Waco, uh, Fopta <laughs> having, uh, her, her brand new powers, uh, which I assume just flat out makes her better across the board. Um, <laughs> she's probably not going to have any issues. Yeah, we don't really know what she's capable of, necessarily. She was already really strong, though not strong enough to fight these things. She's stated multiple times now, <laughs> um... But we don't really know to what extent she's going to be changed by her wish here. Right. And Once again, by... we, know the, we know that those wishings, the, the wishing stones that she has aren't perfect ones. But even then, they still seem to be pretty damn powerful. Yeah. Even if, it, even if these creatures are, like, native to the abyss and stuff like that, I mean, still, these things... Uh... Seem to be a fairly big deal. So, I guess uh, my only question at this point is, is... We learned that, I guess, the whistle power-up for Reg has a cooldown. Yeah, because it, it's... It, it seems like using the whistle not only uh, exhausts Prushka, but also exhausts uh, Rico, because Rico's been super out of it ever since she used it, too. Right. So there's some questions as to uh, 
what the deal is with that. Uh, probably not getting met this season along with why uh, Perushka is black and white. Um, but The know. only current explanation I could potentially see for that is the fact that we still don't know how the other white whistles are made. Um, so it could just be a case of like the white whistles themselves carve their own white whistles out of the resonant stones. But Perushka is black because she was carved by the like gem master guy down here. Indeed. Which seems to have some sort of like preternatural sense for the things. So it could have been a case of the white whistles just don't really know how to do it properly. So like Prushka could be a superior white whistle essentially. Yeah. Because she was appropriately carved by a being that, you know, is like, I assume that was their wish to be able to like be some sort of master craftsman. So, uh,. <laughs> You got Master Craftsman versus people on the fly just kind of throwing it together and hoping it works. <laughs> Obviously, the White Whistles, there's more to them. Like, the White Whistles, the, the Cave Raiders. Um, but we haven't seen or heard anything to do with, like, them seeming to be able to uh, read the Resonant Stones the way, like, the Gem Master could or uh, Fopta can. Right. So, as it stands, this has been pretty damn good. This was a really solid episode across the board. Can I just say that the soundtrack absolutely killed it this episode as well? That was impressive. I mean, the soundtrack's <laughs> always been really good. Yeah, and but it, this in this episode, it was more on the forefront than, than normal. Yeah. It was one of those things where it kind of, like, was able to take center stage, and, uh, you know, they didn't really have to have any dialogue, uh, like, constantly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked about that before, and uh, it, it was just a nice uh, thing for the pacing. But, uh, it was one of the things that this uh, episode really kind of revealed slash put emphasis on is that while yeah, Fopta is immortal, uh, she still has physical constraints to her body. Like damage, damage is still damage until she manages to regenerate it. That she's still capable of physical limitations as a result of injuries right which is always something you're gonna have to uh figure out when it comes to immortal beings yeah sometimes immortal beings just literally don't care about injury at all mm -hmm. and we don't really know what the extent of her regenerative power is you know like if there's just a small can she like majin boo it you know what i mean or could she take enough damage to the point where she cannot regenerate you know what I mean? I'm pretty sure it isn't a case of like damage specifically. It's probably a case of like similar to misfortune in uh, Skullgirls. Skullgirls is actually misfortune is actually very similar to Fobda, uh, in that it's a case of like she's immortal, but she gets her immortality from a stone embedded in her body. So uh, as long as the stone exists and it's bound to her. Uh, she's fine but if there's nothing left of her or she gets severed from the stone then her immortality goes away right there has to be something to actually still be connected to the stone she can't literally no longer exist kind of thing mm -hmm. and uh presumably that's the same thing with Fopta and her three wishing stones where as long as uh, whatever connection she has to the zones isn't severed, and as long as there's at least something of her left to be connected to them, she can probably regenerate from anything. And apparently can get a helping hand by eating hollows. <laughs> the whole thing there wasn't necessarily that she was eating hollows, it was that she was regenerating off of their value. You know, that is the name of the game this season. Literally. <laughs> value it's what's for dinner apparently <laughs> so it's uh it's interesting that none of the hollows seem to have uh wavered in their like desire to like just become a part of her you know what i mean 
Like even when she's like attempting to kill them, it's like, nah, we still want to be part of you. you know what I yeah, mean? like we've seen some of the more sentient ones, like the innkeeper chick, still have like some sensibility to them about it. Like she obviously sees Thopped as a threat, but we even see in this episode of like, even though she knows Thopped as a threat, she still has that like instinctual desire to need to help their, help Thopta and be there for her kind of thing. Right. But I mean, uh, at this point, they are facing the primordial beast crisis, which uh, unsurprising that they would be drawn here. Pretty obvious why they're drawn here. <laughs> they, they've been basically circling this damn place like buzzards for forever. Well, not forever, but ever since it's uh, years or so. It, yeah, ever since the village has been a thing. They've been, you know, poking at the gate like, hey, let us in. Hey. <laughs> Stop keeping us out. We want to eat you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I, uh, I, I'd normally say, hey, man, it, it's, uh, we got some pretty, uh, gory stuff in this episode, but man, uh, Don Machi on Monday still was more gory than this, which is saying something because, there have been some pretty hardcore moments in this show. And it's not the most hardcore thing that's happened this week. Mind-boggling. <laughs> I mean, this one was less gory, but more still we had more grotesque imagery, like with just how screwed up fucked his body was and stuff at points. True. But for all intents and purposes, we know she can regenerate, so it kind of has less of an impact, you know what I mean? Yeah. And she was pretty much the only one that was shown taking a massive amount of damage like the rest of the hollows were kind of yeah there was a bunch of blood coming out and stuff like that but overly ridiculous but uh I, I guess we've gone from a uh, automated protector week to a uh, super gory and gross week <laughs> <laughs> which speaking of what the hell happened to that guy he was pinning down reg and now he's just gone like what what the hell <laughs> presumably he got murdered in the initial wave because uh apparently he was not still pinning down reg is not a she got a hold of reg right now all of a sudden reg's cool and with the with the group it's like did we miss something what happened well, off screen not not with the group we essentially we have four groups going on right here we have we have fopta then we have nanachi and reg off on their own we have Bueko and Wazukian off on their own, and then we have the remaining Hollows with Rico. Yeah, there it is. But yeah, it's it quickly cuts between all of them, but they're separate. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that was two quick rapid succession cuts, or three, technically. Really? I was like three frames behind? You have to be kidding me. <laughs> I missed it like six times. <laughs> what happened to my superpower about landing on stuff that I want to land on? What happened today? It's gone, along with my hair. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> At least we found it. And did it live. But... And that's where we're at. We're, we're just going to kind of have to see. Uh, I assume, you know, Fafta is going to handle the primeval beasts and that's not going to be an issue. He's going to be, uh, you know, showing off her new and exciting power. And uh, then we're going to have to deal with uh, um, Wazuchan and whatever uh, his deal is. Wazuchan and his freaking... And his uh, whole, uh, I can use wishing stones despite being an adult. Right, because they keep harping on it. It's like, no, you have to be a child. It's like, what about him? <laughs> Adults can't be persona users. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> I'd like to introduce you to Maruki and freaking Zenkichi and several others. <laughs> And, you know, the fact that the P3 cast are complete adults at this point, and you know what I mean? Just, just not even a go mean, there. 
the big the big bad of Persona One is some big like freaking CAO tycoon guy who is a Persona user. All right. So that aside, <laughs> we, we got the big one question mark left to uh to see how they wrap up for the season. You know, uh, to wrap up ourselves here. I think it's a pretty safe bet that, you know, Fafta joins the party. The only, like, real wild card here is what Fuecos fate is going to be at this stage, you know? Yeah, like, there was... This was the make or break point, basically, of if Fafta was joining the crew as, like, a uh, at least semi-permanent member, was basically if Fafta died here. Uh... But no, like pretty much the whole thing with Vopta's wish here and like regenerating again to this more powerful form and all that. Pretty much everything with that was just alluding to the fact that Vopta is also going to become an adventurer. She it was her coming to a realization that she really doesn't know anything about even the things she thought she knew and that she wants to learn more about it. Yep. And that that's her desire beyond simply destroying the village is going about going out and learning about people. Oh yeah, I like it. Pretty damn impressive across the board. As long as this isn't a damn Sharing gun, I'll be fine. <laughs> so that's all I got. Solid episode. Looking forward to seeing how they wrap it up next week. Then we'll just be in the season three waiting room for years. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> got yeah, anything the else? Age? The author's not particularly fast and. From everything I have read and discussed with people, the this last episode more or less stops right at where the original con the original like source material is up to. That there really isn't anything beyond this. Mm -hmm. So it's it's gonna be a minute before there's enough uh, new work from the author for them to actually do a season three. Yep. So unless they... once again, once again, season two was announced pretty much immediately after the success of season one, and there also wasn't enough material for that one. That's why we had to wait some, like three or four years. Right. It's like, no, you're a nude. Keep writing it. <laughs> <laughs> Get back in there. Get that crazy man back into the room. Lock the door. <laughs> but anyway. Train of thought's gone. Did you have anything else? I, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm still reeling from having to deal with more random nonsense earlier. <laughs> oh yeah, really. It's just going to be a matter of like, okay, what goes on? What's going to go down with Wazukyan and Fueko pinballing off into the distance? Uh, like, what exactly is Wazukyan at this point? And uh, what, what does "touched by the divine" mean? Exactly. Yeah, what, does that really, what does that really mean? Well, what does that really mean? Is it like the opposite of the abyss? Is it the abyss itself? You know, what, what are we talking about here? What what drove all these people to, you know, be banished from their home countries and seek out the abyss? You know what I mean? Yeah, whatever it is about Wazukyan, it was something that existed prior to his exposure to the abyss because he didn't even know that the abyss existed initially he came here looking for the golden city and found a giant hole in the ground right <laughs> hey man sometimes you go looking for el dorado and you you find nothing but dirt uh, what are you gonna do <laughs> sometimes you go looking for uh, el dorado and find your and instead you find uh freaking uh what was, what was the joking reference to it it was it's freaking uh Dr. Lovecraft's uh, fun time murder hole. Yeah. <laughs> don't want to be there. I don't. But anyway, I digress. Ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, beyond half you're watching, we always appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us here in the dojo for more anime night in the dojo. And this was Made in Abyss Season 2, Episode 11. Looking forward to uh, 
season finale next week and then we'll be, be uh, moving on to something else what that something else is i don't know we'll find out in two weeks so have a good morning evening afternoon whatever it is for you as you watch have a good one see you next time hey everyone victoria here if you enjoyed the video please consider pushing that subscribe and like button any and all support is greatly appreciated thanks again for your time and see you next time